Hey everyone, it's Ross, and uh, today's video, I want to talk to you guys about my plans. Things that are going to happen this spring. We're changing a lot of things around, and it's pretty complicated, so I'm really going to try to explain this the best I can without showing it to you, right? you got to really imagine this in the flesh, but, um, you know, try to, uh, try to really imagine this the best you guys can. In this location, we had some dwarf apple trees that I had grafted myself raise them up from a pup, but we took them out because I've realized that uh, they really just don't become large trees. And I've looked at pictures of dwarf apple trees on the internet and found out that I'm just not satisfied with how they would fill in this space. I've given them such a huge space. I mean, look at this. This is like incredible how much space is here. We're about 10 feet away from that persimmon at least, maybe even 12, 15 feet away from that persimmon. Why give dwarf apple trees that much room? It doesn't make any sense. So what I did was, take you guys a little, on a little walk here. We're going in the back now. But what I did was I took all my dwarf apple trees actually and put them in a, a hedge, two different hedges actually. We talked about this. Hopefully you guys saw that video. We took them all out of pots. We took them all out of the ground, if there were any in the ground. We, I think we had about seven in the ground at the time. We put them all in this area back here, right? Right along where the grapes are. Um, we're gonna put muscadine grapes behind them. We've talked about this before as well. But right, we got this kiwi vine here that's being trained. It's gonna be trained along this wire. We have standard plums in the in the ground here that are going to be a spy aid against this fence along these wires here. And then behind it, we have another wire. We need to tighten that up, but that's where some muscadine grapes are going to grow. And then we put in these apple hedges right in front of them. And they're kind of tiered, right? This one's a little higher. This one's a little lower. But every single dwarf or semi-dwarf apple tree I have is in this location. And... Uh, this way they're a lot more dense, right? A lot, it's a lot higher density for these small trees. And I've realized that's just how they should be, you know? Otherwise I should have got a standard, put that in the ground and grafted all these different varieties onto it, right? So now I've got them in the right spot. And we've pretty much been correcting mistakes since we started. You know, it really, it really does, uh, is a bit of a disappointment. You know, you're gonna make mistakes from the beginning, guys. It's inevitable. But at some point, you're gonna have to, uh, <laughs> you're gonna have to correct them, all right? So back in the front of the house, where we just were, I'm not gonna take you guys over there, but we're gonna put in eight different peach trees in the crown, or even nectarines. They're gonna be on standard rootstock. You know, I will take you guys over there. And because they're gonna be on standards, they're gonna grow similar in that hedge fashion that I have over there, right? I'm gonna prune them to kind of grow in their own little direction. But again, they're gonna be in a line like this. Some trees are gonna grow out this way, other trees are gonna grow out this way. And I kind of have that orientated with the direction of the sunlight. So if the direction of the sunlight is coming, coming in pretty much in between these two poles here, that's where we'll have the trees. One having going out this way, others having going out that way. So, you know, I think that's a little, I think that's a good way of doing it. Rather than doing it like, you know, planting them across this way or even across this way, we're doing them on a diagonal slant. And it'll kind of give it a little bit of a nice, in more interesting landscape appeal, I think. More of an ornamental appeal. But that is gonna be Four, it's going to be uh, about five or six standard uh, peaches, and the, the rest of them will be standard nectarines. Along here, we have our raspberries and blackberries, and they're in a raised bed. I like that. I like the fact that their roots are contained. They're not sending out runners everywhere. But what we're going to do is we're going to knock the... Uh, knock the walls off these raised beds. I really don't like the raised beds. I'm not a big fan of them at all. And we're going to do the same thing to this raised bed over here. We're taking off the walls. And by taking off the walls, we're going to spread out the soil just about everywhere. We're going to take it maybe the top half of this. So 
you know, it's a foot high, right? So we'll take the top six inches. All that excess soil is going to go over there. We're going to create a separate, a separate secondary hedge that's going to fill in this lane right here. And in this lane, because it's now going to be a nice little raised berm for me, we're going to plant into that. Um, we're going to move, of course, the raspberries and the blackberries that are in that location, we're going to put them in this one here. Um, this is a nice little three foot space, three foot wide. The other bed over there is only two foot wide. So we can fit in, I think, two different rows of raspberries and blackberries in this little small area. Um, I probably will give them four feet, you know, two feet width for each, uh, each plant. But then behind it, we're gonna put in things like a persimmon tree, a whole row of different pears, European pears and Asian pears. And then along here, going in this direction, if you can imagine this, we'll have trees growing out this way and trees growing out that way, similar to the apple hedge, similar to the peach hedge, and similar to this pear hedge that we're going to have here. We're doing another hedge going this way that is going to be apricots and plums on semi-dwarf rootstock. And the, the pears also will be on semi-dwarf rootstock. And the persimmon is probably something that gets around uh, 10 to 12 feet tall. So altogether, these trees are going to kind of tower over this little area. And then along here is going to be those blackberries and raspberries filling that space in real nicely, have a real nice dense fruiting of those things. I'm going to have too many berries. I'm not going to know what to do with them. I already do at this point. Just from two raspberry plants is enough to feed me to the point where I get sick of them. But over here, we're gonna knock down this raised bed, right? Take out these raspberry plants and move them over there. And these blackberry plants, even though you can't see them. But we got two Primark Freedoms here. We've cut down at the base. But we're gonna knock off the, uh, the walls, move this trellis system, and then this is gonna open up a whole area for me to put in two different rows of figs. And I think this is like the greatest microclimate for them that I have on my property that isn't already taken up by something, right? We've got this western wall. The sun's already shining on it. I mean, this is like the perfect amount of sun. They get about seven to eight hours, maybe even a little six hours, depending on the time of the year. But, you know, seven hours is really good. And the heat that's gonna radiate off, radiate off of this building, we're already putting some in here along the house. The rocks are great. And we're gonna just kind of extend that into a nice little hedge. We'll have a row along the house. Nine of them will go around, along the house. And then we'll have, uh, I think, uh, I can't remember exactly. I think it's like six in this row and then seven in this row. And basically it'll come out to somewhere around here. We've got persimmons in the ground. And I think this persimmon will stay, but we're gonna take out, I think, this mulberry. We're gonna bring, we're gonna, <laughs> There's so many things I just mentioned, guys. It's so hard to comprehend or, or like fully see, I think. But um, yeah, I'm trying to make this as easy as I can on you guys. But this little persimmon will fill in this little area really nicely. We got a secondary persimmon here that we'll, we got to find a home for somewhere in this little area. You know, these persimmons, luckily, because they're Asian varieties, they're not going to get that big, right? My Rosianca here has seemed to have taken on more American. Uh, traits in terms of its size. It's really vigorous. It grows quite a bit. So This thing we need to control a bit more, but these other ones They're only going to get maybe 10 12 feet, right? They're Asian varieties So we can kind of put them in a nice little spot. It's not going to take up too much room um, but the mulberry is going to go and That way we've got we got two different rows of figs here three different rows of figs. I'm sorry. Believe it or not, all together, I'm putting in 35 different fig varieties in the ground come spring. Isn't that going to be incredible? I can't wait to show you guys. Um, we're not done. <laughs> We've got more things to talk about. I have a couple things that I want to put in the ground over here. Small things like, you know, little bushes like Joseph berries. I got a, a, a current or not a current. I got a, uh, a gooseberry I found to be interesting. We got some honeyberries that we planted over here already, actually. 
but we're gonna graft some mulberries here. We're gonna graft um, Girardi Dwarf onto these um, native uh, red mulberries here that we've ordered online from uh, Missouri Conservation or something like that. We're gonna put them in the ground here and they're not gonna get very big. They're only gonna be six by six at their full mature size. And that way, they're not gonna take up a whole lot of space. I can net them and I'm gonna get a whole lot of fruit versus my Illinois Everbearing over there in the corner of the house, which was taking so much space and not really giving me a whole lot because the birds are getting all of it. So this area is gonna also have the mulberry. It's gonna have uh, you know, the gooseberry. It's gonna have all kinds of little weird things like I put, I'm getting some alpine strawberries, guys. Other different types of strawberries we're gonna put all around here. This whole thing is gonna be covered with a ground cover of strawberries. And I've already started that whole process, but we've put in early glow here all throughout this bed here. At some point, that's obviously gonna, gonna shift downwards, but we're gonna try to cover this whole area with strawberries to the point where I'm not gonna know what to do with them. We're gonna be, uh, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna be sick of them pretty much. But anyway, the last thing we're gonna do, because I, oh man, I mentioned so many things as it is, but, I'm already dreading some of the work, but I enjoy it. Um, this whole area that we're overwintering all these pots in, the trees are gonna come out of here, right? Because a lot of these trees that I've mentioned we're gonna put in the corner of the house, we're gonna put over there around that bed. All those trees already exist in these pots. So all we're doing is taking them out of these pots and planting them in the ground, which is gonna free up this whole area and what am I going to do with this area? I'm going to plant some figs. <laughs> and this is probably the best spot. This, this is probably the best spot in the yard for fig, uh, for in-ground fig trees, other than this wall. You know, this wall is the best I can yet. But, uh, you know, we've got this nice little microclimate here for the ones in the ground because we've got a wall here that radiates heat. The patio radiates heat. And this little spot right here, believe it or not, is the sunniest spot in my yard. This, this little area, it's really not that big, but this gets the most sunlight out of anywhere. Um, I think even more than along the house, if I'm not mistaken. So these trees that are gonna be planted in here are already on a nice little berm. I've created a nice berm over the years, believe it or not. They're gonna be quite raised up and they're gonna have all this access to all this heat in this location. Maybe even some protection from the wind because this is offering some protection, but you know what? This is more of a windy location in my yard than others, but that's okay. We've got will proof to help with that. And uh, we should have really good success here. So I'm really excited to see how this is all gonna work out. We've really put in a lot of different things in the ground filled in a lot of gaps we're really increasing the density on this property guys whether it's over here in this planting you can see we've just been piling on the mulch chop and drop guys that's all it is look at all this stuff look at all this material we've added in here it's incredible actually so i'll probably give this little area a break start adding in material underneath these apple trees because i want them to be pretty good growers, right? I want, the, they're pretty shallow rooted. So anything I can give to these guys is gonna be really beneficial to the depth of the dwarf apple trees. You know, we, we're probably not gonna put a whole lot of mulch in this area uh, for the figs, but we are gonna put down some rocks, um, help with that, you know, ex, add a little bit of extra heat, keep the soil covered with those rocks, but uh, not really feeding this area at all because the soil in here is really great as it is. I've put down so much mulch in this little section over the years, believe it or not, but we want less fertility with our figs, guys. Uh, I know that's pretty counterproductive to what most people would think, but it's true. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's kind of the video. I mean, we just went nuts. <laughs> we, we really got a whole lot of plans, and I, I know this didn't make it too much sense. You really got to see it when it's all done. I'll show it to you guys when it's all done. It's all going to make sense. But uh, yeah, looking forward to it. And uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Take care, guys.